Good morning, Kansas City. Welcome to another fun episode of Life After, a show dedicated to hearing the stories of path students take after high school. My name is Katie Zeke, and I'm a teacher at Southeast High School. These interviews <coughs> feature students that I taught from my past. Today, we are joined by Brian Gunnels. Welcome, Bree. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So glad to have you. It's been a long time. You were my first class at South. I know. Almost five years ago, or yeah, exactly five years ago now. Yeah. So introduce yourself. <laughs> Who are you and when did you graduate? I am Bree Gunnels. Um graduated in 2017. That's right. And what do you remember about your senior year? Well, as it does not feel like five years ago, but the first thing I think about when I think of high school is basketball, basketball season. That was always my absolute favorite time of year. Um, uh, but I just remember like how close knit everybody was. Usually the, uh, just about our entire senior class had been there since like middle school. Mm -hmm. um, in that particular year, we had a lot of new people, but like the core of our class had been there, been going to school together for like a really long time. So yeah. that's all I remember, close knit um, class. I'm so glad. Why can you explain to our viewers what happened <clears throat> your senior year with Southeast and everything? Um, we'll have so Southwest was closed down and um the year prior it was AC Prep, I believe. We changed the name a few different times. So I think it was AC Prep our junior year. Yeah. Um closed down Southwest, turned the school back into um Southeast and then we went from like a few hundred students to close to a thousand and a much bigger class, much bigger um, classes in general, like a lot more teachers and um, options to take other classes. So it was a lot different. My senior. Yeah. Yeah. Was that a good thing in general or did you like being in your smaller class? <clears throat> uh originally when the idea came about, I, we were all a little upset. Like, like it was, it would be really weird to have, 300 to 700 students that was weird but I think overall it made the senior year better um mm -hmm. met a lot of different people or just people that we may have known uh played against or something like that now we're, we're classmates so I, I liked it I, I didn't like it at first but it was good yeah and did anything great happen with you in your basketball season your senior year uh yeah we probably pretty much had the best season um, not only of my personal career, but just in the history of the whole school. Yeah. Um, we were, what, I think, a game away from state. Fell short by like a, like one or two points or something like that. That was a really good season. I, um, like that's like I said, that's like the first thing I think about basketball season. And then just summing up my whole career, that was like the highlight of my whole four years there. Really? Yeah, for sure. That. And who is your coach? uh coach Ramsey and his daughter coach Lima Ramsey yeah yeah they're still here coach Ramsey are they yep I didn't know that okay yeah. okay wow I know it's great <clears throat> so then what did you decide to do after high school <clears throat> so <clears throat> I <clears throat> came to Cedar Falls Iowa to play basketball at the University of Northern Iowa I think I left literally like probably a week or two after graduation Really? I mean, like early June, maybe like June 3rd or something like that. Started summer workouts and it was like, it went so fast since then, right into my freshman year, freshman season. And um, yeah, so I went right to school shortly after graduation. Good. So you were on a basketball scholarship. Yes. And then what did you decide to study right after high school? Um, originally, when I first came in, I did um, physical therapy slash biology. And mm -hmm. I took some classes and I was just like, no, I... I don't know about this. So I ended up like taking a bunch of like random classes. And one of the classes I took was sports psychology. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I think I like this. And they had just made it a major. So I ended up changing my major to that. And then I added um, sports administration minor, uh, what, my sophomore year. And so, yeah, I originally came in physical therapy, thought that's what I wanted to do. But um, sports psychology, I liked way more. And I'm still, I'm just, I'm pretty much done with everything, but I've, I've liked it so far way better than I probably would have liked biology and chemistry. Yeah. And all. yeah. Was it hard for you? Was it, <clears throat> was it hard to switch majors? Were you worried about making that switch? I was, I, I think I was not, I wasn't as worried about, um, my classes, I was more worried about, is that really the career I want? Because right. although the classes may be hard, I may still want to be a physical therapist. So that was a little like, um, I was back and forth on that. But then sports psychology isn't too far 
away from that. And so it wasn't like I was just going from like biology to um, English major or something like that. It was still in the same, you know, it's kind of the same way we somewhat, somewhat. So um, yeah, after a while, especially when I actually liked my classes, I was like, yeah, this will be okay. Good. It sounds like that was a good move for you. Yeah, for sure. And then what take us through college take us through your experience there how was basketball how was school have you graduated yet um so I have not graduated yet I actually accepted the fifth year so we got like a COVID year um extension so I ended up taking that it was I didn't want to at first it was like one of those decisions I was going back and forth on but I realized there was a lot more pros and cons to coming back for a fifth year so I will be graduating this coming spring um yeah so um just thinking about the whole journey, it's like flown by. Like, it's crazy to think that I was in high school five years ago. I was a senior now. I'm a super senior now. But um, my overall experience has been good. I think um, the best thing is I'm at a place that's very different from home. So it's pushing me out outside my comfort zone a little bit. It's helped me grow and understand um, new settings, new different people um, a little bit better and be able to um, – just grow and do, do things a little bit different than I'm used to. And now I'm used to it because I've been here for almost five years. So now it's kind of um, like a reverse of what high school was, but, you know, still, still growth overall over the course of four or five years. Yeah, absolutely. And did you continue to play basketball? Yes. Yeah, so I, my freshman year, I didn't play as much, um, but starting from my sophomore year, I pretty much, um, have gotten better each and every year. I, I think my, my sophomore year was season first season I started. Um, so yeah, it's been pretty much uphill from there from sophomore year on up. Good for you. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, what? So you're just getting started in your final season. Yes. How do you feel about that? Uh, it's bittersweet. I'm excited for the the next chapter, but uh nervous about it too because now it's, it's the real world it's not you know high school to college is you know my actual career my yeah. my life pretty much so that's yeah. that's a little nerve-wracking but it's exciting at the same time I'm ready Absolutely. for it so that's the brings it to my next question what do you want to do after college what are you thinking so my my goal and it's been my goal since like middle school I've always wanted to be a pro so the thought of being paid to play basketball is like amazing to me like I, I don't see any other way of living so I, that's what I really want to do um whether it's um in a WNBA or overseas or both or um anything I'm, I'm pretty much open to anything mm -hmm. um but I am still studying well I'm pretty much done but I'm still studying sports psychology sports administration and so um if you know basketball doesn't work for whatever reason I'll do that right away or you know once my basketball career is over I would love to get into coaching or you know athletic directing administration in some type of way eventually maybe even come back to Kansas City and do it there and you know even help build the the Southeast basketball program but you know something like that I would love to get into that maybe either right away or once my career is over yeah absolutely so what does that mm -hmm. look like um <clears throat> to advocate for yourself to get into the pros? Do you have scouts coming to your games? Do you have to promote yourself, send film? What does that look like? Um, So I'm in like a, I'm gonna go to a division one school, but it's like a smaller uh, yeah. conference. So if I was in a bigger conference, it'd be like probably scouts are watching every game, but for smaller schools, it might be when I'm playing against bigger schools is when they're watching. Um, and so that's important to play well, not necessarily go out and get 30 points, but play well, um, show what you can do. Mm -hmm. um, but once this year is over, I would basically like hire an agent and that's how I would get myself out there, whether that's sending a film or doing tryouts um, or just doing like a pro day or something like that. There's a lot of different options for yeah. that. So um, now that I think about it, it'd be coming up in like, you know, six or seven months, I'll be really, really thinking about that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And you've been mm -hmm. able to stay healthy and <clears throat> mm -hmm. keeping your body in good shape. And Yeah, luckily I haven't had any significant injuries, um, which I'm happy about. And that's another reason why I came back for a fifth year. I'm pretty much healthy. Had I not been healthy, I probably would have tried to go into my pro career earlier, but I've been healthy. So um, yeah, I feel like this this extra year was the best option for me. Good for you. It sounds like it. And now you get to really play, you know, not knowing what <clears throat> the pandemic would do to your season last year, as far as mm -hmm. like, you know, people being able to be spectators or um, right, kind right. of watch you now th as things die <clears throat> down, 
hopefully opportunities will present themselves even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Good. Um, when you think back to high school in Kansas City, how how prepared did you feel to leave the city, leave home, move to Iowa, um, <clears throat> and start over? How prepared did I feel? Um, or was it kind of like a culture shock going from Kansas City to Iowa? I, I did feel prepared, but it was uh, slightly a culture shock. I think the I think a lot of what I experienced, I knew I would experience. I just didn't know how I would feel. Um, So I knew I was coming to a place that um, was a lot different than home as far as the type of people who live here, you know, lifestyle, family dynamic, um, things like that. And I knew that coming in, but it wasn't until I saw it that it was like, okay, this is this is real. Mm -hmm. Um, I knew I was coming to a predominantly white institution that's completely different than where I graduated from. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I say, like, I was pushed outside my comfort zone because now I'm interacting with people who are really different from me, from Mm -hmm. their skin color to the way they may speak, type of music they like that, you know, there's a lot of different things. And I realized that even in those things, people are so similar. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's, it's allowed me to be able to just relate to people who are a little bit different. And had I gone to HBCU, for example, my experience would be a lot like high school. And that's not a bad thing. But for me personally, being one of those like introverted type of people, it was good to come to a setting that was a little bit different. And Mm -hmm. I didn't have my mom or, you know, anybody to kind of hold my hand through it. I literally had to just go out and figure it out. And I had resources Mm -hmm. and support, of course, but it was, I had to do it on my own pretty much. So, um, that's the best part about it. What I've learned the most, I think. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. I think it's easy to go to something that's comfortable, like an HBCU mm-hmm. or a local college or, right, right. you know, a place where you can go home on the weekends. But yeah. it sounds like this has been a good path to truly figuring out who you are and maybe busting mm-hmm. out of that shell yeah, um, yeah, that we kind of saw in high school. Yeah. yeah, I'm proud of you for doing that and recognizing that, that was a good move for you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, wonderful. So last question, if you, were you ever like given advice that you've held on to for a long time, or would you give advice to anyone watching here, um, just as far as what you've learned going from high school to college? Um, yeah, I think, I know everybody says it, but the time goes by so fast. Mm -hmm. And, um, Staying in the moment is really important because I found myself saying, okay, I can't wait to just get to my career and do this. But it's it's, it's good to like settle in and, and really enjoy it because once it's over, you look back, you're like, wow, I wasn't as happy as I should have been because I didn't really soak it in. That would be um, one word of advice. And then <clears throat> don't be <clears throat> don't be afraid to get outside your comfort zone. I was definitely not looking forward to that, but now I realized how much I've grown from it. And I feel like... Um, a lot of what I can do now, I wasn't willing to do when I was in high school. And that's what college is about. Of course, you want to graduate and, and learn and get your degree. But um, just becoming a better version of yourself is important. I think that I've done that. So that's two words of advice I would give someone graduating high school going to college. Yeah, that's so real. And no matter how often you say it, you know, time's going to go by or I meet the next yeah. senior class and like, all right, it's August, but you all will be graduating here in a minute. Yeah. In that moment, it feels very far away. When you look Mm -hmm. back on it, it just flies. Yep, it does. That's crazy. It feels like you were just in my classroom yesterday. Yeah, literally. Like, I I feel like it looks the same, probably. It does. (laughs) I know. I'm still in the same space. (laughs) Yeah, so it's like, that's, wow, five years ago, by so fast. It does. Well, I just (laughs) cannot thank you enough for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here with us. Can't wait to follow you and your college final season and then what comes next for you I know you are such a hard worker and that whatever you set your mind to you're going to make happen thank you so much and I appreciate doing this I never even thought about this was something that would happen so I'm glad we could talk and catch up see you after so much time I know yeah it's a win-win all the way around yes for sure Um, Well, thank you again to Brie for joining us. It has been a pleasure finding out about your path after high school. Our hope is that by having these conversations about our career paths, it might inspire or inform others about their own pursuit of success. Thanks for being here and thank you to Kansas City for listening to us today. See ya.